Welcome back to Coffee and Conversation. And today we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. Um, so, more closet organization chatter. But in the meantime, I thought I would let Audie's fan club know. By the way, he does have a fan club. Uh, I'd let Audie's fan club know that he is just snoozing in the other room. He got a freshly cleaned litter box yesterday, and he rolled in it and played in it. He didn't take a nap in it, which he usually does, but apparently he just got enough amusement out of rolling and playing in it. And he was actually in a good mood after that. Before that, he had been a little testy and cranky. So I guess I now know the secret to pleasing the cat fresh litter. So let's just hope we don't have to do this every day because that could get expensive after a while. Okay, when we come back, back to closet organizing. So yesterday, we talked about my first two, and these are my two biggest organization tips. One, customize your closet to meet your needs. And one of the things I didn't mention yesterday, which I probably should have, is a lot of people will tell you not to overly customize your home in any way, because it affects the resale value. I'm going to tell you that I disagree when it comes to closets because a very customized closet tends to signal high end to potential buyers, even if in fact it is not their own closet organization system. You know, you may have 50 handbags and the prospective buyer may have rows on rows and rows of dresses. Still, they're going to look at that and say, oh, look, look how customized this closet is, and they're going to like it. And even if it wasn't for the fact that I do not think this will in any way impact your resale value negatively, it's important to remember that unless you are buying your home with the intention of flipping it in a few months, you're going to be living there. It really should meet your needs. So we're going to walk away from that for a moment. Your closet, your needs. The other one we spoke about was getting the right coat hanger for the job. And I had mentioned that I was not able to find the big old fashioned coat hangers I used to be able to get all over the place. And after I edited that video, I thought about it, went online, and found some nice sort of, well, they're not old-fashioned, they're modern versions of the old-fashioned coat hangers uh, at Walmart, um, $25 for six hangers. So that makes them slightly over $4 a piece. It's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. So. I just ordered six of them, and the truth is I may go back and order six more, simply because the older heavy wooden coat hangers were better suited to clothing. The hangers were made for the clothes. Now hangers are just spun off an assembly line. They are designed to get out there cheap. So for me anyway, absolutely worth it. If you have jackets, if you have sweatshirts, even some sweaters, I would not hang wool sweaters, but cotton or acrylic sweaters, things that you really might want to care for a little better than just, you know, throwing them on one of those little wire dry cleaner hangers. Yes, I know. I am hearing Faye Dunaway's voice in my head screaming, no more wire hangers. Well, crazy as it sounds, I guess Joan Crawford was right about something. 
they really are pretty bad. So that's what we discussed yesterday. Now let's move on to more closet organization options that might be valuable to you. And let me start with this. All right, you're probably looking at this saying, I have no idea what that is. And frankly, if I didn't know what it was, I wouldn't know what it was. If you unzip this, and I'm not going to open it all the way, but I'm just going to open it enough so that you can see. Inside here is a nylon garment bag. Uh, it's a lightweight version of those garment bags that, well, people used to use them all the time for traveling. I don't know if that's quite so much the thing anymore, but I got this. In fact, I got a couple of these at Walmart. Again, when I start shopping for this stuff, I do Amazon, Walmart, eBay, wherever I can find the best deals. Uh, this was $11 and I got a couple of them. So you're probably thinking, well, we're talking about closets, not trips. Well, so am I. We all have things in our closet that do not see the light of day for long periods of time. Now, the people on YouTube and social media, et cetera, et cetera, who are talking to you about capsule wardrobe and let's go minimal are going to tell you get rid of them. I'm not. There are things in our closets that have such great sentimental value to us that the idea of giving them away or donating them is absolutely out of the question. So consequently, throwing them away is obscene. And there's no reason why you should. Do you have your mother's favorite dress sitting in the back of your closet? Hey, good for you. You have a right to that. I wish I had kept my mother's favorite dress. I mean, I know it sounds silly, but, you know, at my age, having things from the generations past is a big deal. Do you have, you know, the dress you wore to your oldest child's christening tucked away somewhere? Oh, yeah. Well, it's like if that was 40 years ago, I guess it's a pretty safe bet we're not going to be fitting into that again. And not only that, but I'm sure the style of 40 years ago was the 80s. You know, well, unless you want to go out and get that big hair done and all those spunk-eyed colors again, I guess that's not going to be worn anytime soon. But the sentiment is not about wearing the piece. The sentiment is about the baby's christening, right? Why shouldn't you keep it? We all have things like this. I have my great aunt's mink stole, which she gave to me at the end of her life. And I thought it was very kind of her, even though I have the shoulders of a linebacker and my aunt was this petite little thing. So when I was 16 years old, I couldn't wear it. So I'm certainly not wearing it now, but it's there and it's staying and I'm not getting rid of it. And even Marie Kanmari would agree with me on this because it does spark joy. I look at that. I remember all the times she wore it when I was a kid. I remember her draping that around my shoulders when I was six or seven years old and toddling around in her high heels playing dress up. It's full of memories. There's no reason for me to give it away. However, even though I probably shouldn't be giving closet space to it, I'm going to, mostly because I do, in fact, have the space in my closet, and it is a clothing item. And if I relocate it somewhere else, I'll forget where I put it. Things like this, this garment bag, are perfect for things like this. Uh, I keep my great aunt stole my massive winter coat that's in a garment bag too that's in a really big sort of industrial sized garment bag once again back to the 80s and the big hair well the big coats went with the big hair so this thing is huge and i actually had to get an oversized garment bag for it 
But as long as it's going to be in the back of my closet, I would just as soon not have my cat, you know, climbing his way up the coat to the top shelf. And I believe at some point I mentioned to you, we have a lot of stink bugs in our area. And stink bugs leave poo on stuff. They really do. Little brown spots. I don't want to deal with that. Um, having the coat, for example, or the mink in an enclosed, breathable garment bag means I can throw in cedar chips. Good heavens, if I got desperate enough, I could throw in those smelly crystal mothballs and protect it from bugs, from dust, from whatever else. So those are two of the things I have in garment bags. The other things I have in garment bags are Outfits that I don't wear every day. In fact, if all goes well, my funeral outfit is going to stay in there for years without getting pulled out. But, God forbid somebody passes, I need that funeral outfit. The other one, which is more of a wedding outfit. Somebody gets married, well, I'm not going to show up in jeans and a t-shirt. And I don't see any reason in the world given the fact that at my age, well, at my age, funerals are more common than we would like. But things like going off to weddings or big parties, whatever, tends to be less of a thing than it was when we were younger. As a consequence, those nice pieces, they're in the back of the closet. I'm going to reuse them and rewear them as much as I possibly can before they eventually go somewhere. Although I have been thinking just in the interests of perfect honesty, I have been thinking of packing up the funeral outfit and the wedding outfit and doing something with them, like donating them, and then going out and killing two birds with one stone and getting a, a funeral slash wedding outfit. It won't be black. But navy blue. Navy blue would be fine for a funeral. Gray, if I wanted to. I don't really like gray. I don't have a lot of gray in my wardrobe. I say, as I look, this, this has gray. I guess I have some gray in my wardrobe after all. But I could easily go out and get one all-purpose dressy, but not opening day at Ascot sort of dressy, because I just don't do that sort of thing anymore. I really don't. But, you know, I could probably do that. I'm thinking about it. I might do this. Then again, I might not. Uh, I'll, I'll chew on it in the back of my head and see if it's worth it to me. But those are in garment bags. In fact, uh, the, the mate to this garment bag, I got another one just like it is holding both of those outfits together. Because with things like this, this little $11 garment bag, you could probably put three or four outfits in it if either your sizes are small, the outfits are lightweight, you use thin coat hangers, whatever. There are many, many ways you can expand that. However, I would say if cost is a factor. In other words, if you look at that and say, yeah, but I'm not paying $11 for every single outfit in my closet, then I would say go out and get yourself some of those good old hefty lawn and leaf bags. For my friends overseas, I don't know what your equivalent is. These are large um, bags, 30 to 40 gallons uh, they're lawn and leaf bags so that when you're cleaning up your yard, you throw the debris in there and leave it out to the street and somebody picks it up. Who knows? I don't know who picks it up around here, but really somebody does. But make sure you get a, a nice quality bag. You know, the four ply, the real fancy stuff, it's still going to be pennies, a bag, and after you've taken out everything you need for your closet, you're still going to have a dozen bags you can use to clean up your yard. You take the bag, you cut a tiny little slit at the top, 
for the coat hanger, drop it over your garment, and if you don't have little children in your house, you just let it hang loose in the closet. It's not going anywhere. It's not doing anything. It's just taking up dead space somewhere. If you do have little children in your house or really naughty pets like I have, and, you know, the naughty pets are inclined to play with anything they see in the closet, just take the end of the bag, tie it in a knot, and you're done. And that is going to work just as well as any other garment bag. The difference, and there is one difference, is the plastic is not breathable. So every few months, you're going to have to haul the clothing out, shake it out, let it air out. I would just put it outside on the line. You don't even need to take it off the hanger. Just put the hanger on the clothesline and let the wind and air get at it to freshen it up a little and then throw it back in the plastic bag again. And by the way, this is a great option if you just need to pack up a suit or a dress or something because you're going somewhere in the car. Um, you could probably even take it on the train or a plane or whatever. I would not. I might put it on a train because you take your items with you on the train in general. Um, it's rare to check luggage at the train. You can do it, but it's not the common way. Airplanes, yeah, they probably won't let you take it on the plane. I would not check a plastic trash bag. I wouldn't do it. It probably won't hold up to the crap handling they get. But if it's just going in the back of your car because you need to take a two-hour trip to your cousin's house for a wedding, it's perfect because it is going to keep it safe and protected. And you don't even need to go out of your way. You go to your kitchen cabinet, pull out a trash bag. In general, any of your large trash barrels bags will do. Not things like the bathroom waste basket bag or things like that, but a larger one, sure, you should be absolutely fine with this. So that is your like penny option in terms of a low-cost alternative, and it will work well. The reason this is so important is because stuff that sits in the back of your closet gets dirty, it gets dusty, it gets damaged, you know, cat crawling up, stink bugs, whatever. And this is a good way to protect things, especially things you are not using every day. So for me, yeah, that winter coat, that is in the far back of my closet because it's so big, so massive, so heavy. There are only maybe two months a year here in Pennsylvania that I will even consider pulling it out. Um, it was a different story when I was living in New England, you know, where we had serious winters. But around here, now, nah, I would say maybe January and February, and other than that, it's in the back of the closet. It might as well be safe and protected. And it's just too easy. Oh, and obviously, if you're not using all the garment bags, this is how tiny they will pack up, at least if you get the kind that fold up like this. Uh, so, yes, really good option. And it keeps stuff out of the way. You're not constantly handling it, pushing it to one side, flipping through it when you're really looking for something else. So there are plenty of benefits. And related to this, are shoulder protectors. And these are just little covers that go, well, I'll get you a picture of it. And in fact, I just ordered some more shoulder protectors because while I was ordering coat hangers, hey, why not? And these are things you can throw over items that are in your regular clothing rotation, not the fancy stuff that stays in the back of the closet unless somebody dies or somebody gets married. My gosh, how my mind works. Or the coat, you know, we need a blizzard before that comes out. Those stay in the back for good. But there are other things that need protection too. Uh, better jackets, things that, that are nice pieces 
that I really should make some effort to protect, but I don't want to throw them in a garment bag or a plastic bag, even if they are clear and see-through. The reason I don't want to throw them in garment bags is because I do want to see them. If it's in my regular clothing rotation, I want it just right in front of me when I go into the closet. If it's not in front of me, the truth is I won't wear it as much as I should. And I will often go out and say, gee, I wish I had worn blah, 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 but I didn't. However, the issue I have with clear garment bags is because I don't want to have to fight through a zipper, take the bag out, take it. I would like to be able to walk into the closet, take a hanger, take a jacket off, put the hanger back and go. And you can't really do that with a garment bag. I find that unless you really have a largely empty closet and you can afford to use your closet rod, you know, you have to take it out, throw it on the bed, put it on a hook, whatever, and then open the garment bag, take out the item, find somewhere for the garment bag to live while you're wearing the item. It's, it's more of a hassle than I'm willing to do just for the sake of wearing a jacket out. And if I have to go through that hassle, well, there's always something else there that I'll wear instead that I can just take off the hanger and run with. So knowing that I will always choose the quick and easy option first, that's how I do it because these little closet um, shoulder protectors are, they are either see-through, I do have some that are clear plastic. The reason I ordered new ones is because the, cl the clear plastic uh, gets brittle and yellows after a while. So yeah, it was great, it did its job, it's lasted for 40 years, but you know, Maybe it's time that I just get something else, especially considering the fact that they're about $2 a piece. Again, Walmart. They only cover the shoulders of the item, so you can clearly see your jacket, your dress, whatever it is you want to wear. It's not fully protected, which is why I wouldn't use this for anything, like, really nice, you know, if this is like the, if this is like a French designer jacket, oh Chanel, no, throw it in a garment bag, you know. I mean, it's Chanel. Give it the respect it deserves. But if it's just an ordinary bit of clothing that you want to care for, these shoulder covers are really, really wonderful. So we're still on covering stuff. Let me show you this. This is a shoe bag. I would say it's probably about 14, maybe 16 inches. Yeah, probably about 16 inches long and maybe 10 or 12 inches wide. And oh, here, it's got a pretty little design embroidered on it. And I have a couple of those. Um, in fact, I, I have three. I just dropped one. I will fetch it for you. Um, these are shoe bags. Mostly what people do with bags like this, as you can see, there's a drawstring, is they use it when they're packing their shoes for travel. Some people will actually put their shoes in these bags for home storage, but that's not what I do with it. This bag uh, and I do not recall, I've had these bags for a long time. I do not recall where I got them. I am betting it was Amazon. And I, I don't know what I paid for it, but you know me. It couldn't have been much because I'm not going to buy it unless it's very inexpensive. I want to get my money's worth. So this bag... This is uh, this is a crossbody bag. It's about seven inches square, which means it will easily go into this shoe bag. Here we go. I can throw the little strap in. 
Yes, I say as I struggle with the strap. And then, done. And here is my bag of bag. It's attractive. I can set it somewhere, and the bag is protected. And as I mentioned, I have two more of those. I, um, I don't, well, clearly I haven't been using them. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been empty for this video. So that's what's going to happen. It will not hold a large bag, but I do believe if you put the bag in um, lengthwise, it would probably hold um, the average style, uh, the average size Kelly style bag. So, oh, and I know what a Kelly bag is because I remember Grace Kelly. So, yeah, I know. And the kids today have no idea where that expression came from, the Kelly bag, Grace Kelly. So, yes, it'll hold the average Kelly bag. And in fact, if you have smaller bags or wallets or whatever, you could probably easily fit a half a dozen. You can get storage bags like these um, just about anywhere. All you have to do is run an internet search for things like shoe storage bags or satin storage bags. Uh, because you want to be able to eliminate the paper and plastic bags from the search. So I would say, yeah, looking for bag storage, that's, boy, that's easy. Um, better bags. Uh, coach and up. So that's what I'm talking about when I say better bags. Coach is probably bottom of the line when we talk about better bags. They will ordinarily, assuming you buy them new, come with their own storage bag. Uh, if you get them on the resale market and you want the original storage bag, take a look on eBay. They're all over the place. Uh, I get them all the time on eBay. I probably have two or three more than I actually need because I often buy them in, in bulk. It's like, oh, six bags. I'm like, okay, sign me up because I do like to keep my bags in bags. Again, same thing. I don't want them damaged. I don't want stink bugs pooing on them. I do not want Audie seeing the strap to this bag and saying, oh, my mom got me a new toy. I will grab it and run. And he has done that to me more times than I can tell you. And that brings me to, this is going to have to be our final storage tip, because again, time is getting away from me. Shoe boxes. There are so many kinds of shoe boxes out there on the market. Uh, you can get clear plastic shoe boxes. You can get plain cardboard shoe boxes that look like shoe boxes. Mine are just all kinds of different styles and colors. And I, I go out and get my shoe boxes pretty much one at a time uh, because I, I like the patterns and the colors. And I figure if I'm going to get a shoe box, it might as well be pretty. And you know my theory about pretty boxes. It's not hoarding if it's in a pretty box. So shoe boxes are another thing. Yes, you can leave your shoes open in the closet. And for the most part, they will be safe. Moths won't try to eat them. If a stink bug poos on them, well, unless they're like white satin pumps, in which case, put them in a bag. I mean, wherever you're keeping them, put them in a bag. But unless they're white satin pumps and the stink bug comes along, poos on them, you just wipe it off with a, a, a damp cloth or, well, may, I shouldn't say a damp cloth. Not all shoes do well with damp cloths, but you know your shoes, so I'm sure you know how you can get rid of little spots on them. If they're leather shoes, most of mine are leather, damp cloth, good to go. So 
they can stay pretty safely in your closet. I find the problem is dust and my cat. Uh, because Audie will chew on shoelaces and he will grab things by the lace, he gets that little lace in his mouth and just goes running and the shoe's bouncing along behind him. And of course, I'm bouncing along behind the shoe trying to take it away from him. Yeah, I know. Believe me, I could sell tickets to my house on a Saturday night uh, and I owe it all to my cat. I do not like having to dust my shoes every time I wear them. And part of the problem with that is when I do shoe cleaning, I don't ordinarily do it before I put them on. I do it after I take them off. And, and I do, by the way, if you like your shoes, do clean them on a regular basis. They go off your feet, just wipe them down. It's honestly, it takes no more than a minute to wipe them down and you'll be glad you did. But that's my routine is wiping them down when I take them off before I put them away. If I did that and just put them in the closet, I'd have to wipe them down again when I took them out to wear them. So, yeah, goodness, where is the fun in that? So I like boxes, but not everyone does. I, I know all of my shoes. I have, I have fewer than 20 pair. Thank goodness. I definitely had more than that in the past. So all I have to do is just put a little tag in the window in the front of my shoe boxes describing the shoe. And I know what's in each of the boxes. There were times when the shoe situation was so out of hand, that wasn't enough to do it. And if you have a situation in which you have so many shoes, or you have so many of the same kind of shoes, for example, so many pair of black ballet flats, and you know, you're reduced to writing, a, a, you're reduced to writing an essay, in order to tell them apart. These are the ones with no heels and the little bow. This is the one with a little bow, but it does have a bit of a heel and there's a little strap, you know. No, if it's going like that, you probably need to have shoe boxes that are see-through, those nice clear or translucent plastic boxes. But yeah, these things should be put away. Our parents and grandparents would do that with their clothing. They would save the packaging materials they got from the stores. The reason they did that is because they didn't have 50 pair of shoes. They couldn't afford 50 pair of shoes. My grandmother, all right, she did not have 50 pair of shoes. My great grandfather, her father, owned a shoe factory. She didn't have 50 pair of shoes. It just wasn't done. So it's not even a question of if you can afford it. She could have walked into the factory and taken anything she wanted. But no one did that. That was, you know, well, this is the greatest generation we're talking about. And I've mentioned them before. They had hard work, nose to the grindstone. Thrift was one of their core values. They were not 50 pair of shoe people. So we need to remember how they did it when they actually valued their things, when they would save money, no credit cards in those days, save money to buy a pair of shoes, shop at a lot of different stores because the process, the shopping for things, the saving the money, the making of that decision, was as much a part of the process as actually getting the shoes. We are just immediate gratification babies, um, especially those of us who are post-war baby boomers. We had everything. We got everything. We grew up believing that everything would just come to us 
the instant we wanted it. Uh, you know, you see something you want, you don't save up the money, you pull out the credit card. We need to rethink that a little. So that's sort of globally. But getting right down to the basics, we need to take better care of our things. We need to show them some love. We do need to clean our shoes and we need to make sure they're put away and they're not just stacked up in a pile in the corner. And believe me, I'm not trying to criticize the pig pile of shoes corner because been there, done that, and learned from the experience. So I would say absolutely we need to look at better storage for the clothing we have. Little things like put them in garment bags, put them in shoe bags, put them in handbag dust covers, put them in shoe boxes, etc. Let's start focusing on that. All right, we are like so far over time again, and I do apologize for this. I know a lot of you say, well, it's okay if you go over. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your patience with this. But I also know that for a lot of people, just the very idea of a video that's going 40 minutes or longer is a little more than they can handle with their cup of coffee on a weekend morning. So apologies again. We're just going to break here. Oh, no, we're not. I'm sorry. Oh, see. I forgot to do this. Remember Colleen's birthday presents? Well, I have a box that I neglected to open. So here we go. More silver paper for Audie. And by the way, it was kicking around for two days, even after I thought I had gotten it all up. So the cat will be coming out for this, and I am just tossing it on the box. So... Let's see. Oh my goodness. All right, this is really a screen because I'm packing up a box for Colleen right now. And I will I'll snap some pictures of what's going into the box and show you later because this is just downright prophetic. Colleen, thank you so much. That is just, oh, I am going to have such fun with that because I really do have a little Halloween cat. The box I am packing up for Colleen, go, oh, gosh. All right, I know, getting over and over. I do want to talk about this. Uh, J.K. Rowling the woman who wrote the Harry Potter series, has written a series of detective novels. She writes it under the name of Robert Galbraith. And the series is the Cormoran Strike series. And it's fantastic. Now, for many years, the newest edition in the series would come out on my birthday. It wasn't every birthday. I think it was every other birthday. It was like, my birthday, that's when it came out. And I thought, oh, I guess she knows I'm her biggest fan. So the newest of the Cormoran Strike books is coming out in about 10 days. So I have been rereading the previous books just so I'm like right up there and I, I can sort of hit the ground running when the next book comes out. And I'm sending some of the earlier books to Colleen. It is well worth the read. Rowling is a great, great writer. Uh, although, and I do have to say this again in the interests of total honesty, she had written a novel before these, and it was called Casual Vacancy, and I hated it. It reminded me of Middlemarch, which I hate. Uh, Middlemarch, by the way, in case you're interested, is widely considered to be the finest novel written in the English language. I have to say that decision must have been made by people who never read Jane Austen. Middlemarch is awful. 
I had to struggle to get through the final three chapters. It was like, I would read it for two minutes, walk away, and then just come back at a later date, because you kind of have to have read Middlemarch. You don't ever want to be somewhere when somebody says, have you read Middlemarch, and you don't want to have to admit you haven't. It's terrible. By the way, if anybody does catch you by surprise and says, have you read Middlemarch, just say, yes, worst novel in the English language, and then you'll be good to go. But everybody loves it. I hated it. And casual vacancy reminded me too much of Middlemarch for me to, to even consider it decent. Rowling is a great writer. She really is. But that I hated. I can't tell you it was a bad book because it wasn't. She's a good writer. But I personally can't stand it, would never read it again. And I read her stuff again and again and again all the time. So there's my little bit of J.K. Rowling rant for the day. All right, we're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. Ah, way over today. So I will see you all this evening, those of you who join us for just chatting. For those of you who just stick with the weekend videos, have a terrific week.